So one of the first things that I must do is create a loopback address. So let me see if no, so no loopback address has been created. So I will go to configure T loopback zero. And assign a loopback address. Uh, that command you don't really have to type it for yourself, but I just got used to it. All right, so this is a loopback address that we need on that router because one of the requirement is that all your SIP traffic has to bind from that address, has to source from that network. We also have to make sure that we can ping that address. So let's try pinging it. Voila, everything is good. All right, now registration of your phone, which is already should be done on the backbone. So for those who are, you have access to the backbone, you should see that I have, um, all the phones are registered there, right there. And using my phone wizard, I'm going to change this to part four, the last one. So now I will open my phone eight. Okay. All right, so there you go. My part four PSTN phone is live and registered. All good? Um, Niraj, Inian, missing Ali? Oh, yes. Ali is in the Okay. So on part four, I should have phone. Do you have any phone registered? So we should have a couple of phones right there. Um, okay, so she has a lot of phones. <laughs> so let's see which one we're going to use. Uh, let, da, 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 da. Let's say use. Okay. Okay, so HQ phone one. Sounds good. All right. Perfect. All right, so one of the tasks it will ask you is class of service. Okay, this is your partitions, calling source space, stuff like that. So we were, we were required to create them. So I'll go to class of control, partition. Okay, add new. PTHQ 911. This is this is for HQ 911 calls. PTHQ local. This is for local calls in HQ. So you got the point, right? PTHQ LD. PT international. Uh, else international uh, well we need one for internal we need one for teho we need one for called huh these are some of the uh, things that I gave you that needs to be done so I'll copy them because we have centralized for site C Replace HQ with site C. So now I have route patterns for site C as well. Okay. So the first set is for HQ. Second set of these are for site C. Okay. Save. Now I will not do all of them. I'm just going to show you one or two to make sure you understand. Okay, so site HQ employee and I'll do the HQ employee and HQ manager, uh, executive. Okay. 
some sort of uh, problem. Yeah, it's, this is something new error that we're seeing. Okay, so we got partitions done. So I will create two calling source space, uh, one for employee, one for executive. So employee can only dial certain calling source space. It's HQ employee and HQ employee can dial 911. Uh, internal and local. Uh, Teho and local save because executive will have all those plus more I can just simply say copy which will contain everything we already have change this name to executive and then add what is it international and long distance right the two additional so employee can only dial local call, long uh, local call, internal, and nine one one. So basically, this part is like uh, privilege. Privilege, yeah. Maybe privilege to each Right. Now, once I have created a calling source space, I will go to my phone and apply them. So HQ phone. Uh, let's actually make this guy site HQ phone two. I will make the phone two executive, phone one employee. So I'll put phone two into executive calling source space. I will change the extension two zero zero two. H HQ phone two. Remember, site B phone is going to be registered to site B cluster, right? Okay. Okay, we're not focusing on too much of... Uh, Dial as uh, if uh, what do you call E1 uh, globalized number. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, all this phone that you see right here, I'm gonna put them into internal partition. Internal partition so that they can they are protected. Meaning only certain people can dial them if they have the privilege to dial. Uh, this one, same thing. I will apply that to internal. However, for 2001, I'm, which is the employee, I'm going to apply the calling source space for that into their line level. See the previous phone, I applied it on the device level. When you apply the calling source space to device level, it applies to all the line. If you have line one, line two, line three, that calling source space will get applied to all the line. Whereas if I apply the line level, such as in this scenario, it will only apply if you make that call from that particular line, line one. If you choose line two, the privilege of this calling source space will not be applied to you. Okay? So we will save that. Okay, I'll keep this, uh, just keep an eye on the chat and let me know if anybody asks any questions, all right? I'll keep the chat window because so I can give space. Huh? Uh, oh yeah, so we gotta go to the second phone and make sure the partition apply to the second uh, executive phone, which is right here. Bump, right there.
So at this stage, um, actually, you know what? Let me show you something. Let me remove the partition for now. Let me show you something. And also, let me remove the calling source space from the executive for the time being. OK, so right now I got only one phone on partition and calling source space. Other one is quite open, which is the executive phone. So to make life cleaner for this scenario, sorry, Jane. You're going to have to re-add those phone yourself later. Uh, too, too messy. <laughs> there you go. See, clean. Now I know she's going to be upset about, about that, but that's fine. It's not, it's, it won't be the first time. It won't be the first time. I have, I, I, I have experience for 14 years, uh, 12 years of training. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and register my these two phone. So the call manager phone one, call manager 14, 1464. The MAC address will be this. The phone type will be 7965. Okay, so I got both of this phone, phone one, phone two. So you guys are able to hear me, right? Uh, Indian, uh, Niraj, all good? Okay, so you can see that both phones are registered. Yep. All right, so phone one, which is right here, does not have the correct uh, does not have the correct uh, external phone number mask. So I will go right here and change this so that it matches our pod. Okay, one four zero eight two zero four two x x x. And when I reset that. both phones should have the correct mask. See that? See this number right there? That's what the external phone number mask does. Okay? Displays the name. All right, so let's see who can call who. So 2001, phone ringing, no problem. 2002. Your call cannot be completed. Your call dialing. cannot be completed. Please consult your directory and call again. So 2001 can dial 2002, but not the other way around. So 2001 happens to be the CEO. Okay. So imagine 2001 is a CEO. Who? Because your call cannot be completed. It's dialed. Please consult because your of this and call again partition or ask your operator for assistance this is a recording so what do i need on phone 2 for this calls to work i need a css apply to it so if you take a look at your class of control calling source space i have a css both css has the internal partition see that so you go to the phone, phone two, and I'm going to apply that to device level, which will apply all the line the phone might have. So now I will redial. Okay, so it has to reset it. Redial. There you go. Redial from here. There you go. So everybody is happy. 
they're all able to dial each other. So this is what the partition and calling source space is doing. Giving you privilege who can dial whom. Okay, moving forward. So you will have to do this for quite a bit of phones. So I will leave that up to you to finish that. Now we'll jump to trunking. So it says that we must configure uh, Okay, we must configure zip trunk. Let me open my topology. So we must configure zip trunk between this call manager with our cube router, right? We must configure zip trunk between this with the backbone. So this is zip and this is zip. We must configure zip trunk between this call manager to this. Okay. So what we're going to do with this. When HQ wants to dial sites B phone. So when HQ dials. Uh, okay. 3001. That call will go via the gateway to this. Via the cube router to the H site B call manager. So that will be one of our tasks. And any 911 call, all these numbers, the call will go from HQ to the cube, cube to the PSTN. Any inbound call, call will come in this direction. Okay, so I'm gonna do one of each step by step. So the first one I'm going to tackle is calling between my HQ site and my call manager site, site B, site B and HQ between them, three, four digit dialing. Okay. I'm going to allow my HQ phone right here to dial this phone across this path. Not for the to this so you're going to go through that cloud? Right. Okay. I mean, you don't really have to care, don't worry about whether the cloud is a MPLS, PSTN, or black box. All you care that can I ping from HQ side to site B. As long as the IP connectivity is there, whatever it goes through is not our none of our business. It can go through MPLS network, can go through VPN, can go through satellite, can go through moon, all I care. So for good, uh, then what we're trying to achieve, um, Indian, Niraj, okay, perfect. All right, so first step, is tells me that I must configure my HQ router as a queue. Okay, and I, know I must allow these permissions. So, they are off. So first thing first. I have the loop back done. I'm going to go to config T voice service VoIP. I'm going to type IP address trusted list. These are the IP address that I will trust. Now I could be a lazy and I put everything in one statement. That will cover everything. That means wildcard. Okay. But if I want to be more specific, I can say, okay, this is what is allowed. This is site B call manager. First two are HQ publisher and subscriber. Second one was site B call manager. And what else? Backbone. What else? Sorry? This is the cube configurations. Yeah. 464, 254. Now you might be asking why am I creating one for each router because uh, although we're not going to be covering those dial plan in this class but I will be adding more complex dial plan for this course and then once I have a video and I'll send it to you guys uh, or you can get you can download it so that part is not going to be ready for at least another month all right so these are the IP address that should be allowed so for good 
All right, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, you know what? Do not authenticate this IP address. So no IP address, trusted. So who, whichever IP address is trusted, do not authenticate that. Okay, otherwise, routers is trying to authenticate them. So it will ask you that if you disable this, that this will be prevent, uh, can cause toll fraud, which is fine. Now, because the cube router should have permission to dial, receive SIP connection, send SIP connection out. So both inbound and outbound should be SIP. So we must allow that. So we must say allow SIP, sorry, SIP to SIP. So originating connection will be SIP, terminating connection will be SIP as well. Voice server. Remember the bind command. We need to bind the SIP traffic so that all OS traffic originated from the loopback. Now this is something that we faced a problem on part one yesterday. We say SIP bind control source. Now as a I, as a Cisco short guy who tried to do shortcut in every way, we usually put L0 LO0 for loopback. For some reason, it does not like it. And yesterday, Michael and I troubleshooted for almost a half an hour, an hour, figuring out that that you have to actually type loopback full name. Okay, that was the only problem he had. Now we spent like an hour troubleshooting that. Imagine that he had to do that in the exam, in the CCI exam. Now, in nowadays, the CCI exam is first two hours. You have to troubleshoot a network before you can go past the configuration. Can you use the plan? Yeah, you can, you just have to do it yeah. because sometimes we just put FE01, yeah. right? We get, we get, we are habit, we have a habit of doing that. Okay, so that's all I need for now. Oh, I did not, I should have said all. Media. Okay, so in nutshell, the configuration should look like this. Okay. So by now, this is what you have done. Oh, I love Surface. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to configure Kodak list, Kodak class, Kodak 10, voice class Kodak 10. I choose number 10 just for the heck of it, so that to show you the difference, but you can choose 1, 2, 3, 5, 99, whatever. Kodak preference, first choice will be G711 Mulo. Second preference will be G729 R8. So remember the capability? Remember the KP, uh, SDP or capability is gonna offer? make an offer he's gonna make these two offer saying that I can support these two Kodak what can you do okay next now it comes to pattern dialing so my first goal is to be able to reach an inbound call or uh, which one do you want to do reach inbound or side to side so let's do side to side I want to call between the HQ phone side B phone okay which is not in there yet. So first dial pair I'm going to create 2000 VIP. Or you can choose 10, whatever you want, doesn't matter. I just say 2000 VIP. Destination pattern two dot 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 dollar sign. That means that it's before digit. Or I can just leave it empty, doesn't matter. I always put dollar sign to make sure that it, it starts with the last, the four digit, it will be only four digit. Session protocol SIP v2, oh, session IP v4, session target. What will be the target? Two zero zero two dot dot dot, going toward HQ. Because right now I'm right here. So, two dot 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 is like going toward, yeah, so no, to the HQ call manager. So from here, 
two dot 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 will go to the call manager here so that ultimately rings this phone three dot 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 will go this call manager ultimately rings this phone okay 911 will go to backbone think about it like right? you're in the middle you're saying any call with 2000 range goes to hq any call with the 3000 range goes to side b any call 911 goes to PSTN. You guys are okay with that, uh, Niraj? Anyone? Come on, it's Friday. Show some enthusiastic. It's, you know, you'll have a party time. Indian already did his party. Indian bought the uh, Bintang. Bintang, is it? Bintang? Huh? What is it? Bintang, yeah. Uh, Salamat Datang. Yep, it started, huh? Exactly. <laughs> what do you call like welcome or say Salamat Datang? Okay. Yep. Yeah. See, I know. I know a little bit of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I actually I actually delivered two Cisco cores in Jakarta uh, back in two thousand seven and eight and ten. Sorry, th three cores I did in Jakarta. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Oh wow! Something new. <laughs> okay, <laughs> long time, yeah. So 2000 range will go to uh, 146421, right? Now, what is next is I'm going to incoming call number. I'm going to put what can I put? Dot, dot, two, dot, two, dot, two. Two, dot, dot, dot. Sure. Now, so this is a simple dial plan going toward anything we're missing? The Kodak, right? Kodak. Uh, voice class Kodak 10. Okay, now, we're not going to do this keep alive for now, but that part we'll take care of it later. DTMF, Relay, SIP KPML, or RTP and TE. All right, so this is the, my first dial plan. Now, sometimes I can be lazy, so I copy that to Notepad. Three, three, sixty-five. The opposite direction, right? This is going toward, huh? Incoming? Yes, yeah. So, dial pair voice summary. It tells you what do you have going where. So. If we type this command, it will show you all the dial plan that you have in a summarized table. It will tell you the operation state of these dial plans are up. Yesterday, Michael and I discovered that some, there was something new was called busy out. If you see the word busy out, that is usually due to your uh, keep alive not configured properly between the SIP trunk and the dial plan on that IP address. So if 2002 dot 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 call arrive, it goes to this IP address. It's 3 dot 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 call arrive goes to this IP address. So for good? All right. Now, this part is done. Our next step is to go to call manager. Uh, right now, this is the HQ call manager. I'm going to add a SIP trunk. Click next. We'll call this HQ cube. Sure. Okay, what else? Access for PSTN, sure. Run on all interface, sure. Now, significant digit, calling source space. Remember calling source space? Now, you have to keep one thing in mind. 
this is very important. See, this, there will be trunk from this router to this call manager, right? Okay. Now, you have to keep in mind that this trunk is receiving call that will ultimately ring this phone. That is the goal, right? Ultimately ring that phone. But that phone belongs to a partition. Remember internal? And what happened to phone, uh, uh, phone 2 when we were trying to dial phone uh, exec CEO? It did not work because we needed a what? We needed a calling source space. So we also need a calling source space on this trunk as well. Otherwise the trunk will not be able to reach this phone. Neither, neither of this phone. Why? Because they belong to internal partition. So think about this trunk is like as a phone trying to make a call to those phone. Think about the trunk entry point is a phone trying to make a call to those phone. So they must have a calling source space. Okay, so this is why the calling source space is the most important part for you to understand because it can break and make your life miserable. Okay. So does that make sense to you guys, Niraj, Indian? Okay, so here the inbound call, the calling source space, I'm going to choose the most privileged one, the executive. That will give you everything because like this is a gateway. Think about it. He doesn't, you don't really have to control a gateway. Gateway is not going to make a, a sudden call to a CEO. Employee can. So gateway should have everything. Oh, sorry, missing something. Then you scroll down. You're going to define the IP address of your cube. So which IP address should I use? Are you sure? That is correct. CSS access to group or partition. You have to put the loop back because that's what we bind. Remember the loop back address we bind the zip command? That, so we must put that address. Not just uh, any address on the router. The router could have multiple address. But whatever the address we bind it, So, um, so whatever the address we binded here should be the IP address right here. If we put uh, the router address, so it's going to pick up the nearest um, address number. Or address. Sorry? If we put uh, the router's address. You mean the physical address? Yeah. No, then it will reject the call. It's like, think about this. I'm sending you a call through one NIC. I'm expecting a return traffic on that same link. But if I send the traffic to you one link and you're trying to send it to another link, I'm going to say, well, I don't recognize that traffic. So it's going to reject that call. You're going to get an error message saying it's 503 server error. Okay? Okay. So what is that address we're going to put? Well, show run interface loopback zero. That is the address we need to put right here. So for good, we must define a SIP trunk profile, SIP profile, and we are ready to go. Uh, do a reset on the trunk. All right, now we have to send a call from HQ to site C, correct? Sorry, site B. What are what is the number the user is going to dial to reach site B? Something with three thousand, yeah. because site B starts with three thousand range. So I'm going before I do that. I want to put this guy in a route group because route group decide which gateway to the call a call will use. So I will choose R G H Q, and I'm going to add this route group in there. Then I will create a route list. We will call this RL cube. 
and it will contain the ad we're going to click on add route group and we're going to add the one route group that we created that's it okay so run on all interface because we have both publisher and subscriber and reset so finally we need to create what route pattern that's what the user is going to dial that's what the user is going to, we already have one see 3xxx she created it but we're going to point this to rl Q, meaning that whenever somebody dial 3000 series number the call will go to the cube router in this case HQ router does that make sense to you guys okay now let's uh, without going any farther I'm going to do a quick call and troubleshoot it I know the call will fail perfectly fine I'm going to make a call from HQ phone 1 and I want to see if the call hits the router so there's a debug command you can type on the router so let me clean the uh, clear the screen it's called debug CC SIP messages this is this allows us to debug SIP traffic troubleshoot SIP traffic we're going to dial what number I'm going to dial? 3001. Okay. Okay, so there you go. Call coming in. I guess it's Friday, so he's taking his time. <laughs> okay so it's still not working but let's see we'll uh, we'll wait for something some sort of invitation okay so let's analyze this a little bit so start uh, I'm gonna actually try again because the monitor part was not on so let's try again three zero zero one boom 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 call coming 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 and end the call did not work so this is where my debug messages started see invite 3001 at the IP address of my cube call came from 2001 at 142 1464.21 and you'll see that as I so at that moment the invite message comes in the content length zero what does that mean no offer exactly it's a delay offer so the content length zero means that they initially did not make an offer then it's going to it's trying trying means trying to call ringing but fast busy or whatever and you scroll down scroll down it goes back and forth it says cancel because I canceled it remember I actually hung up so I need to find out it says request cancel okay now let's uh, try again and this time I'm gonna wait for a little bit time see what happened wh uh, what happened if the uh, Just keep trying, trying. Ultimately, it's probably failed. Okay, so now we do know one thing that the call will not work unless we have a SIP trunk from the side B to the router. So let's go to the side B call manager now.
device trunk no trunk is created inside B yet maybe let's see well that is sorry that is my um, backbone uh, 146521 Is your side B up? Okay, so, so her side B is not up or maybe there's a VLAN issue. So let me log into that. Let me first of all F9. So it's supposed to be on VLAN network, side B router. Okay, side B is also in the same VLAN, which is fine. Now, I may have to check the default gateway. It might be the, because we used to have a different default gateway before. So that might be a problem. So, you gotta be really like whenever you're configuring this it's okay to face problem because the problem will teach you all the commands and troubleshooting everything that we need so it's extremely important so sometimes I, I sometimes I see the students does get frustrated when they don't get things working you know in a one shot or two shot so you gotta be very uh, uh, a little bit patient about it. So show network details, uh, Ethernet details. So let's see what is my default gateways on this. Okay, so default gateway is set to one, which is incorrect. So we're gonna change the default gateway. It should be set to 254. That is a side B router. There you go, see? So now side B should come up. See, a little bit of quick VMware troubleshooting tools for you. That's my Friday bonus for you. <laughs> All right, so log into side B call manager. Uh, Niraj, Indian, so far good. So what we're going to do right now is establish a SIP trunk from the side B cluster to the cube router. Okay. So first thing first, go to trunk. I'm assuming there is no trunk right now. No, oh, there is one trunk. Alrighty, so let me go ahead. I will just leave it as it is. possible that's a pretty slow today all right so go to zip trunk or 
Why is this so slow? Interesting. Uh, next. So just like the way you have created a zip trunk from side HQ to the HQ router, we're going to do the same thing from side B to the HQ router. All right, we'll call this HQ cube. So what IP address here? Same IP address, the so loopback. So uh, 114, 4 dot 64, that's your loopback address. That is correct. Dot 4. So I'm going to reset. Now, as because my debugging is already on, I believe it's still on. So let's see if the reset will generate any messages there. Okay, so no. Actually, my call, uh, SIP message is off. Okay, so that's done. Let me try one more time the call. Your call cannot be completed. This time different, see that? Please consult your directory and call again. Before, there was no noise at all. No, no ring, no ringing back, uh, no lady complaining, you know. Now, you have something saying that users, uh, the call cannot be completed. So now, let me analyze the log. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna actually clean up the background so that you can start from beginning. Redial. Your call cannot be completed, it's dialed. Thank you. So I start from the beginning. So this is my initial invite message, okay? And I will then scroll down. Scroll down, it's ringing, it's trying, 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 trying. There you go. It says 404, not found. Now, 404 not found, that is what type of error message? Server side or client side? Client side error message. There was nothing wrong with the HQ router. Okay, so 404, if, if the problem was with the HQ router, then you would get 503 error message, right? So why why is that running? But so what, the one of the probably possible reason is that, well, the phone is not even registered on side B, because we, we don't have a side B phone open, or maybe the number doesn't exist, okay? So we don't have any phone registered here. For side B, so let's see. I don't think she registered any phone, so I'll just use this one, agent one. Wizard at three zero zero one. Oh, perfect. So I'll just copy this into my phone wizard. So I will register phone number six. No, that is not the MAC address. I'll copy this phone number six with 11, 79, 65, 142, 14, 65, 21. That is my site B. So I will go ahead and open phone number six. Okay, so I have a phone number six. I have my HQ phone. Okay. I will dial again. Three zero zero one. Yalla, Habibi. Shukran. See? The call, 
successfully completed? If I answer, okay, when you answer, you get a fast busy. Okay, that is secondary problem we're going to deal with. That is your something that we need to troubleshoot. But you see how simple, if everything is up and running, should be working. Now you notice, uh, let me try something again. And this time I'll sh uh, watch this. Redial. All work. But this time, let's analyze the message a little bit. So this is the invite. Content length is zero, right? Content length is zero. So that means what? No, uh, no, um, delay, uh, sorry, no, uh, it's a delay offer. You're trying, 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 call is ringing. See right there, the phone is ringing. So before we did not see this message, before we see it trying, but now it's actually ringing because there's somebody else there on the other side. So as it rings, oh, actually I did not answer the call, did I? Okay, let's try, we're gonna try answering the call. Uh, redial, answer, call fail. Okay. So this is the phone ringing, as you can see right here. Then he received an acknowledgement, okay. It was successful. Look at now, content length is greater than zero. All up until now, everywhere the content length was zero, zero, zero. See, zero here, zero here. The moment he answers the call, there is a content length greater than zero. That means an offer was made. And that offer says is a version zero, Cisco system SIP, call manager. This is the, what is that? Right there, it choose G729. Somehow it negotiated G729 for whatever reason. Okay. Is that the offer or the accept? The response? Uh, this was, I believe, okay, so that's a good question. Is it an offer or is it a response? I think this is the offer because there's no other offer. Uh, so the only thing it's offering is G729. Right, right. Okay, so length zero, 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 and you answer the call. And I think that's why it failed, because he couldn't reply with an offer, except offer. So this is how you would uh, complete a call. Now let me try show you something. Going to uh, HQ site, this is HQ. I'm gonna go back to the trunk. See this tr HQ trunk? Only thing I'm going to do, I'm gonna check this mark. Media termination point. I'm going to check check this and save it. Redial. Oh, uh, clean up. Okay, so it's clear. Okay, I know why it's slow because of the recording. Because the video is being recorded. All right, so three zero zero one. Answer. Okay. Yeah. So this is something to do with. Now it also could be should deal with something. Um, it's still content length zero. So it's supposed to be. Uh, it's supposed to have G7. Uh, sorry, uh, media terminal early offer enable for it, but for some reason it's still probably not taking it. So probably a couple of reset requires. Now let's go to the HQ dial pair. I'm going to do something on the dial pair level. Actually, I'm going to go to the voice service VoIP. Uh, sorry, I think what is the voice? No. SIP uh, early offer forced. Okay, let's see what happened. I'm going to force the early offer. Okay. 
call has been answered. Uh, simply by checking the early, forcing the early offer, the call was successfully completed. Okay, so if I go back, uh, you see the initial invite message. Uh, okay, I'm gonna start try again with a clear background. Phone one. So my recommendation is that whenever you're practicing, do this little tweak and see what the results are. And take a note of that. That's the best way to learn. Okay, so call was successful. No problem. But a lot more messages there. See, this is, okay, I think it's because too many messages came in. It uh, truncated. But you will you see the now early offer took place. Okay, so this is something that sometime you might realize the call why the call is failing, and then you may re, you may realize you may need an early offer to make that call work. Compatibility issue? Who knows? Which is to enable uh, media early offer. Oh, Enable that, yeah. Okay, so that is our first task. So we're going to take a quick break, and then I'm going to show you how to call, how to receive a call from PSTN to your pod. After that, we're going to take another break. Then we're going to show you how to call from your pod to PSTN. So the inbound call where from the PSTN phone, you will dial this phone number. That call will come in through the cloud to your site B, sorry, HQ uh, cube. From there, we will pull the call in to our call manager. From there, we'll ring this particular phone. Make sense? Okay, so first thing first, Let's uh, register a phone to PSTN, which is phone number eight, I think, was. Then I'm going to make a test call just to see what number, what information comes in. Now we're going to assume the PSTN is already configured, okay? Well, that's not something that uh, we're going to go through in this particular lab. We're going to assume the PSTN is already configured. Trunk is there. We're just going to do a debug just to see what information comes in. So this is my uh, HQ phone, I'm gonna close that. I'm going to dial 1408-204-2001. This is my HQ phone number. How do I know? Well, because A, PSTN assigned that, and then based on this right here, see the HQ E.164, 140820Y, 2XXX. So I will do the same thing, 108204001. And as I dial them, it's gonna get a fast busy. I did not see anything because turn monitor on was off. We dial. Okay, so call is not even coming in. Okay, so now uh, let me find out this problem on the PSTN side. Maybe the PSTN is not configured. We'll see. So go to look for pod one. Sorry, pod four device name so these are my pod 4 devices pod 4 RTR HQ RTR that's my pod 4 device so let's go there okay so 
that is uh, incorrect it should be four okay it's the loopback address <coughs> we'll save that and reset so once this is defined we also have to make sure that the route pattern is there so let's try the route pattern 1408204 search for this and we have one going toward the right place okay so let's see if anything change uh, route pattern config so you click on this so this is your route pattern your partition your gateway which is your part part for rtrhq and everything else is pretty default Uh, login console Okay, so call came in now uh, what uh, What you don't see the gateway It's right here Part 4 HQRTR. That's the name of the gateway we're sending the calls to. Okay, so you notice how if you look at the invite message, it says the invite message came from this for this guy. It came from the backbone. And of course, early offer content. Trying not found and even give you the no dial peer matching found okay why well let's go type show dial for vpr voice summary it, the, the, the router does not know what to do with this number see this number that's coming in the router does not know what to do with that number okay So what we're going to do first, uh, give me one sec, let me just reply to this. Uh, one second, let me just reply to this. Okay, sorry about that. Um, okay, so where was I? Right there. So the router does not have any dial plan. So I'm going to go and create a dial plan. Dial PN VoIP 201408 VYP destination pattern 1408204 dot 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 dollar sign session target ipv4 call manager oops wrong one session uh, protocol sip v2 voice class codec 10 uh, what else do we need huh dtmf relay save uh, what is it kpml rt pnt okay so let's try again well of course i gotta have a phone up too hq phone has to be up Uh, 
So I'm going to redial. I'm getting fast busy again. Okay. No problem. So now it is telling me that outbound dial pair, no dial pair matching still. So now I want to find out what it doesn't even match any dial pair at all. So I will unzip that. I'll say debug VoIP CCAPI in out. Sorry, debug, uh, debug VoIP dial pair all. This will allow me to troubleshoot all which dial pair it is taking this command. So debug voice dial pair all allows me to troubleshoot all dial pairs. So if I redial, it's telling me that it's taking the right dial pair. See that? It chose the right one. Dial pair 1408, the one I just created. It tells me which dial pair it is it has chosen 1408 so what is 1408 that is my dial pair right here so why it did not like it okay so let's go to call manager for a second so this is my HQ trunk right here So on the HQ trunk, I'm going to make one change. It's called significant digit 4. Reset. While I am on that page, let's redial. Still doesn't work. It worked. What a magic, huh? Jeez. Okay, so why may, why did it make it different? Just significant digit four. So let's do a debug. Uh, debug CCSF SFP messages. So I'm gonna redial again, and this time the call actually worked, just because of one check mark. <laughs> The reason, see this number that's coming in, 1408, sorry, 1408204201. Is there any phone register with that number? See that 11 digit number that I dialed, right? Is there any phone register? Because HQ phone is not registered with that number. HQ phone is what? 2001. Since the extension length of the phone is only four digit. But I'm dialing 11 digit, so I have to convert. I have to convert to four digit. So what I did in, in, in the trunk, in the trunk I've said significant digit four. That means the what's most important to you is the last four digit. Drop everything else. So that selection basically indicates that he's going to take the last four digit and drop everything else. So the last four digit of that phone number is what? 2001. And after dropping it, the system know that 2001 is one of the phone registered inside. Does that make sense? Indian, Miraj, Sadia, does this make sense? Uh, yes. Okay. So, does it that, mean that we don't need to translate it on gateway? We can just do it here. Damn! Uh, darn! I was about to come to that. Uh, you were right. <laughs> so, significant digit basically says whatever the number is coming in through this trunk, whatever the number is coming in through this trunk, the last select the last four. So, whatever the number is coming in through this trunk to the call manager. Select the last four digits. So it's going to take the last four, uh, sorry, last four digits of this number. But you don't need to do the, you don't need to do the scheme operation like that. Yesterday? Yes or no? So I'll come to that in a minute. 
Does that make sense to you, Indian? So significant digit takes whatever the number comes through this trunk, it will take the last four digit. If your extension lengths are five digit, it will be last five digit. So it's, it's always start from the left. The last right to left. Yeah, okay. All right. So that would cost you one nasi guran there, Indian. Okay. Oh, what's your national dish there? Forgot. Huh? <laughs> Okay, so now the question is, do I, if I use the significant digit, do I need to do translation? So first understand, get it in your memory what the significant digit does. Significant digit takes the last, whatever the number is defined, that many digit from your number, starting from the right to left. Okay. Okay, now, this, the most recommendation is that it's better to do the digit manipulation on the router than on call manager because of the CPU utilization, right? So the recommendation is to that do as much as translation possible on the router because the router is more hardware related, okay? So we do not want to use this method. Sorry, Ali. I have to make your life hell. So we do not want to use this significant digit. So we're going to set it back to all. We're going to set the significant digit back to all. And we're going to use translation rule to change that. So at least one thing we have guaranteed. That our path is fine. Sometimes you have to take a one baby step just to make this thing works. So our path is guaranteed. So I'm going to change this back to all. Okay. So right now, if I read, if I reset, I make sure reset. I should be back to normal. Uh, again, the call should not successfully go. What do you have, uh, See, call cannot go anymore because significant is set to all means it's receiving all eleven digit. Sorry. If you have the phone, um, you put four digits right there. So on the, on the line level, you can put uh, all the yeah the yeah. If you, you can go to the phone and say, you know what? What if I just change the whole number to eleven digit? I could do that. 408204. That is also best. Uh, that will work. What is it? My extension number. 11 digit. Which is not really uh, practical. You could. Huh? Isn't there like an E194 or whatever that is for the down option? You could. Yeah. So, but I don't want to. Some more. There's an e, e dot one sort of translation, but I don't want to go there right now. So let's try this now. Reset. So 11 digit number. Okay, see that? Extension is now 11 digit. So this phone has 11 digit number. But having 11 digit number is not practical because then internally you have to dial all 11 digit to reach other people. That's why we always have to you rely on. So what's the, what's the quickest way to fix? Significant digit. That makes sense? Uh, we, yeah, I will show you that as well in here. So, Significant digit will allow us to take only the last four digit or last five digit depending on what we select Before I go to the router. I will show you another option. So first option is what? Significant digit the cheapest fastest Second option. We're going to translate the call number in call manager Using translation pattern Right using the translation pattern in call manager Okay, so I'm going to add a new translation pattern. So I go to call routing. 
I go to call routing, translation pattern, and add a new translation pattern. And what I want to do is I want to capture all the number that comes in, 2042XXX. The reason why I don't want to put 2001 because I don't want it for one person, I want it for the whole company. So, so, so can you see this scenario like this? Mark 408 that's our company, let's say PBS DID number. number. That's my company PBS board number. Right. right. So two X axis means it can be any extension. So that's why it's broken. First few purposes. Right. So company will usually give you two zero four service provider will give you two zero four two X X X. That covers anything but two thousand to two nine nine nine. So all your ex extension has to be in that range. Sometimes they might even give you four access that covers even a lot more, though, lot farther. So, if I took, a, if I look at that number, how many of those numbers is important to me? Last three. Last four, technically. Sorry, last four. Right, Jane. The last four digits is my number. I want to keep that. I don't want to drop everything else. So there's one way of doing it. See, between these two, between four and two, I'm going to put a dot. It's a, it's a marking point. It's a marking point. So I said it's a pre-dot. Then I'm going to come down where it says discard digit. Discard the digit pre-dot. That means before anything, drop anything before dot. Discard digit before dot. Does that make sense? <coughs> uh, Niraj, Sadia. So we want to disk Indian, we want to discard digit. So how many digit? Anything before dot will be dropped. So what is left? Four digits. Four. Only the last four digit is left. But the one problem, now the translation pattern is converting the number and then it's going to dial to 4, 2001, which is HQ phone one, correct? So let's save this. So this factor definition doesn't have anything to do with coming out with, right? It's a general. It's a general. It's a both direction. Yeah, because this, why? Because maybe the next one, or you will see how. Because whenever we call it out, then we need to show the full number, right? Right. Well, that's. that's we'll right. talk about that later. Uh, outbound call. So now what you're saying is that if I want to dial one four zero eight two zero four. 2001 is the translation pattern has the highest priority. He picks up the call, drops everything before dot. That means the first, how many digit? Four, seven, uh, seven digit. It drops the first seven digit, keeps the last four. So let's see what happened now. Okay, oh, my PSTN phone went off. Phone six. Ah, no, phone six. Phone uh, eight. Okay, so now I'm going to dial. One four zero eight two zero four two zero zero one. I still get a fast busy. No problem. We'll go, let's go back to the router. What does it say? Why is it failing? It's still saying no dial pair match. No outgoing dial pair match. Not found. So basically, what it's saying? Four oh four error. Again, the problem is on the client side. So why did it not work? This is my translation pattern. It looks correct. How do you know that that error is coming from the client side? Because 404 is the error indicating coming from the client side. 503 is indication okay. the client coming from server side. So the 404 is not being generated by the router, it's being generated by the call manager. Call manager. They're being pushed back. Pushed back to the response coming back. Okay, never mind. You didn't specify what to send this call back to? No, I mean, the call manager knows what 2001 is, right? Can anybody take a guess? Call manager knows that 2001 it's a part of the system, it's part of the dial plan. Call come in, we match that number. See that number basically says that 
140820.2xxx so 20001 so after pre dot is going to be 2001 so Comagin knows the number 2001 but I still cannot reach it no CSS. CSS. Yeah. Calling source space. See that calling source space? Yeah. yeah. Because your phone belongs to partition. Your extension 2001 belongs to partition. You must have CSS applied to the translation pattern. And as soon as I do that, oh, that is between the phone. Redial, voila. See? Redial, works. Well, certain cases do. Because certain cases is do. Naturally, pattern, because I will be informed that this is discarding the number and well, again, you have to uh, you don't you, you can't compare the this with other problem. Everybody has their own ways of prioritizing it, so we can't we don't want to get into that vendor comparisons right now. All right, what we're going to do right now? So the two ways we learn how to digit manipulate, right? Significant digit. What does it do? Just take the uh, last, four. last four, last five, whatever the number you define, and drop everything else. Translation pattern converts the number. What if I do not want to use pre dot? Okay, let's let's take a look at one thing before I touch this. So now this is between my IP phone to IP phone, HQ to HQ. What if I dial this? 1408204201. Your call cannot be completed. I think this phone is not registered so I close. The process will send the number the last This one? We don't have to because it's dropping. I'm just saying drop the number. Okay, so now I don't want to use this either. I'll delete this. I don't want to use that either. So if I were to redial, Call get fails again. So th this is when I'm going to go my trans. I want to use a translation rule. Now I want to use a translation rule. So config t voice translation rule rule number one. Rule one capture everything. I don't care what number coming in. Ten digit, eleven digit, twenty digit, thirty digit. Capture it. Dot star. How many digit of that number comes in is important to me last four digit So how do I in order for me to keep a create a bucket? Yeah. What do I need? Before bracket what do I need? Yeah, slash That create slash bracket Okay, the, the carrot symbol Yeah. Now, not carrot symbol. Now, carrot symbol means the number has to oh, be from the front. The last one, the dollar two sign. dot 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 dollar sign. Yes. The last four digit is starting with two. Backslash close forward slash. That's my search. Replace. Put the put the value of bucket number one. That's it. Now I need to create that profile. Translation profile DID. Direct inward dial. Translate calling or the called number? What called number? Based on rule number one. What am I going to apply that? To my VoIP dial here. Voice 1408 going toward call manager. Translation outgoing call DID. Now Going back, redial, 
Oh, my phone just died. Cancel. Okay, so redial. I see as smooth as it is. You do that 200 times, it'll come to natural to you. Yeah, it's like a punish yourself like a high school, you know, near kindergarten, and you do something bad in a class, what the teacher does. I will not do it again. I will not do it again. I will not do it again. They make you type, type 100 times. Well, you know, you want to learn? Go back to that age. <laughs> okay? Does that make sense to you guys? Um, Inian, Siraj, Sadia. Oh, was I? Yeah, it's recording. Yeah, it's recording. So like that, you should be able to do it 911 local call. So, so far we have tested site to site and inbound. Now we want to test an outbound. And that will be the it for my side, my part. Then I'll let you go back to lab. Okay, so now on my call manager, that's not call manager, HQ, I'm going to create a raw pattern. Route slash hunt route pattern. Add nine one one HQ nine one one. Send the calls to Q. Use external phone number mask. Ex use external phone number mask as a caller ID so that this number will show up one four zero eight two. I want I want to I'll uncheck this for now. Save. Now, I will get my router up, debug CCSFIM SIP messages, clean my screen, pick up phone one, dial 911. Your call cannot be My call cannot be dial. completed. Turn on. Redial. Your call cannot be complete. So my call, can, it's the same message, you see? Same message, dial, uh, post uh, 404 not found. Why? Show dial peer voice summary. The router does not know what to do with 911, does it? So what do I need? Yeah, I need a dial peer. So config T. So what I'll do? Uh, because 911 is very important thing, we must create a dedicated dial pair for 911. See, I, I like to create my dial pair with the exact purpose of the number, so 911, 911. Okay, session, protocol, SIP v2, session, target, IPv4, 142.100, 64.100. Voice class codec 10, SIP, oh, sorry, DTMF relay, SIP KPML, and NTP, uh, RTP, sorry. Anything else am I missing? All right, let's give it a shot. Worst case scenario, the call will not work. We're getting used to that by now. <laughs> yeah. Run for your life! Police will come. See, 911 call works. But I have a problem with that. I have a problem with this call. The problem with this call is that I'm the 911 guys is seeing the extension 2001. He will never be able to reach me and save me. So, what do I need to do? I will go to call manager. See the 911 pattern? I'm going to say use external phone number mask. And external phone number mask of the phone is right here. Is right here. So I'm going to use external phone number mask. Save. Uh, 
and redial. See that? 2001. But I'm still not happy with this. The reason I'm not happy with that, because the 911 policy is that it should show you the trunk line, not the individual number. It should show you the trunk line, not everybody. I don't. I, I, I need to know the trunk line because some company they overwrite individual DID. But what if I want to write down the company's number, main switchboard? So that in case they have to call back, they call back to the receptionist. So, but then I cannot do this check mark because that will take the individual numbers. So what do I do? It says where well, it says calling party mask. I will say 1408204 That's the company's main number. It overwrites the mask. Okay? It overwrites the mask. Okay, now redial, see, 2000. See this number right there, matches right here because of that. If I put 0880, one seven something see it shows the number 880 this is how i how i, I was able to fool my wife saying that i was in bangladesh <laughs> i once changed the phone number in my office <laughs> made a call to my wife she goes when did you go to bangladesh <laughs> <laughs> most North American company they will allow you to change the color ID to whatever number you want but this is not allowed in Asia or Middle East they will overwrite service provider if, it, if you try to send your own DID sometimes they will overwrite that does that make sense to you guys Joe, uh, Sadia, Indian, Al, Niraj all right, so we have seen how outbound call works. We have seen how inbound call works. We have seen what site-to-site -site call works, right? My suggestions today, spend the rest of the day doing this. This is more important, the partition, calling search space, dial plan. These are the most important for your day-to-day -day administration. Okay, in the meantime, what you're going to do over the weekend, it's a 12 days boot camp with two days no class, but you will be finishing the videos on media resource. You look at the video and then these are the slide. You're gonna finish the lab. Now, if you have finished the dial plan lab, then lab number five or day five lab, sorry, will show you how to configure conference everything and extension mobility. We'll cover this stuff lecture wise, uh, extension mobility, single number reach, on Monday, but Monday we'll also touch base on CMS, Cisco Meeting Server. So, goal for Monday to Friday, okay? Monday, we will do C, uh, media, CMS, and mobility. Tuesday, we will do NVD connection and UCCX. Contact center. Uh, Wednesday, we might even do presence. Actually, we'll do presence as well, IMP. On Wednesday, we will do telepresence, expressway. Thursday, what else is left? Oh, we will do our MGCP here and IP phone, physical phone registration. Uh, Telepresence Expressway, um, I think that's it. 
and then Thursday and Friday uh, will we'll continue. Well, expressway and everything. And if I try to, if I if I can, I'll try to show you some. Oh, E nine one one overview of overview of E nine one one. And Friday, Thursday, Friday, we will focus more on troubleshooting, like this, the, the way we did today. Okay, this is our goal, and that will complete our UCCE CCNP. Sorry. CCNP outline plus because of CMS because of UCCX you're gonna learn the foundation of CCIE as well so this course is actually the reason why we call it a CCNP collaboration plus is actually a hybrid course that covers CCNA CCNP and CCI foundation it is intensive but it is uh, lab oriented so you will be doing you will be Finishing Unity Connection Lab, you will be finishing Presence Contact Center Lab, you will be doing the Pre Presence Expressway. 911, we won't be doing it here, but you will get an idea. Or maybe you will. Here, this tour has uh, telepresence and um, CEO, E911. Well, yeah, important. so this, this covers the wide range of the in, in a regular CCNP collaboration course, anywhere else, they don't cover CMS, they, do, they will not cover E911, they will not cover contact center. So this is extra bonus for you guys. Any questions, uh, Niraj, Sadia, Inian? If not, we are gonna take our lunch break. And rest of the day is all labs, no more lectures. Saturday, Sunday, you can continue to access your lab, practice. Otherwise, we will meet up again on Monday morning. Yes, Indian, you got a question? Gateway not showing where? Oh, you okay, so you are you're creating a route group and you don't see the gateway in the list? Okay, that's because you're already assigning the gateway in your route pattern. Delete the route pattern, and you will see it. Because if they're assigned to your route pattern, it will not be they will not be available in route group. So delete your route pattern, then go back to route group, and you will see the gateway there. Does that make make sense? <coughs> Okay, folks, enjoy your lunch. I, I, 